What's good, everybody? Good afternoon. Getting in our last recap for this week. We'll kind of take over from where we left off yesterday. We wanted to see if this one hour fair value gap here would end up being left open. I kind of look for price to return up into that area. We have an inversion level. We end up creating that fair value gap, but you see price was extremely bullish and we actually leave that as a breakaway gap. As we continue to talk about today, right? This is what we kind of use to understand price will continue to deliver bullish. Also this institutional order flow entry here. So it's showing, showing signs that price just wants to uh, continue higher. Right? That's why our new week opening gap here ended up being that target for us. We also can look, we had labeled the consequent encroachment of this wick as well as this high to see if price can get up into that. And you see how nicely we first hit the consequent encroachment, slight retracement, and then we blast right through the high. Seeing us blast through that high, leaving that breakaway gap, that's why we expected price to continue to run this morning. And we'll take a look at that. It's a low time frame, still the same thing really, right? Using fair value gaps. So for the time being, I could move this. We use the 15 minute fair value gap. We come into that and from there off to the races, reaching into that new week opening gap, finding support there. Notice how as we're breaking through the new week opening gap level, we're leaving a fair value gap. So that's how we can expect price to hold those levels. And as of now, we're just continuing to dig up into this new week opening gap here. Five minute, same thing. So just working down through the time frames. Five minute fair value gap. We originally come into it here with this stab lower. But you'll notice that we actually targeted that as liquidity, right? Being a short term low, kind of seeing it as a turtle soup entry. So it's a short term low that we can pick up as we return into more of this inefficiency. This is also a breaker here that you'll see on a smaller time frame. So we had discounts here that we were looking for price to return into. At the same time, we can take it to that flagship model, the OTE. Right, if we were to pull up the OTE, which is in between these two white levels here, the black line is the most important. You see how we run right into that, leaving this low just above it. So as we return into that level, we have liquidity to take as well. From there, we just break higher, break up and through. We then create that institutional order flow entry again on the five minute. So barely come back into this wick. Notice how we're primarily holding right this new week opening gap level and the fair value gap that was created there on the higher time frame. This is a 15 minute, but this wick goes into the lower time frame fair value gap. So the wicks can kind of do the damage, but the key levels are what we expect to hold. Consequent encroachment of that 15 never gets broken with a candle body. So it was nice to see that. And you'll see price continue to just respect discounts. So that's why you see us take that second and third trade here that we shared, right? As we're just respecting discounts, it's obvious price wants to continue to deliver higher. As we work down to the one minute now, you'll start seeing more of just the price action that was unfolding in here. So we had first labeled this, right? This is the old high. We don't need to show all of it, but on the one minute, this is the old high here. So this is the high that we were referencing yesterday. And you'll see that before we're right at 830, right at that news, we stab right up into that high. So at this point, we're kind of seeing what price wants to do. We had created a YouTube model already in the form of this short term low being cleared breaking structure at its high here as well as here. So all of the highs and leaving behind the fair value gap. So we're cleaning YouTube model here. Right and now as we break through this wick, break back above the old high as well. Once we close above it with the fair value gap, that's why we have this labeled here. That fair value gap becomes important because closing above the highs like this indicates that price will want to continue to push higher. So at this point, it's not 9.30 yet. We're still waiting for 9.30, but we want to see what kind of takes place within here. All right, so we leave that fair value gap. We end up retracing into it, heading into that 9.30 opening. Look how beautifully that fair value gap holds. We close right on its low, open with the volume imbalance. That candle returns into the low. Can't get one tick below it. And from there, we continue to deliver higher. When we got here at 9.30 now, right, this is the whole 9.30 opening, 9.30 candles right here. At 9.30, we saw how we had accelerated through this high. So we were targeting this buy side, 
those that were in the stream saw that. But not only is this buy side, with how aggressive we pushed up and through it, it actually becomes, oops, bullish. Right, that bullish market structure shift. At this point, this is where the breaker comes into play. We actually were using the two minute, we could use the one minute as well, but we'll show the two minutes since that's what we were referencing. We have a swing low here, up to a swing high, down to a swing low. Low, high, lower low. It's broken with displacement. So at this time, right, these consecutive up close candles here become our breaker. So if we were to drag this out as well, and now we can go back to lower time frames. We'll see how that plays out. So we formed the breaker here. We then notice we have a fair value gap in line with the breaker's mean threshold. So I'm going to move this, right? This is the five minute fair value gap. We're going to move that in line with the mean threshold of this breaker. Look at this fair value gap here. Right? It's not a surprise that this fair value gap is formed as we're blasting through that breaker here and formate creating that formation. So this is why this fair value gap here had our attention because it was within the breaker lined up perfectly with its mean threshold. We'll kind of remove that breaker now, right? Keep this here. We have this low now in place. And one thing that we were speaking about earlier is the importance of this low not returning into the breakers mean threshold. So I'll remove the one minute Right, this low here was simply a running lower to engineer liquidity above the mean threshold of the breaker. Right, it's not random that we stop just above that level. This is the mean threshold. This is where that low stops. When we see that and we start giving this retracement here, we understand that if we are to now reattack this low, we would expect it to just be a run on stops and not be a true market structure shift. Right, price is just picking up these stops to now reverse and continue higher. And all of this can be understood from the idea of that original setup that we spoke about this morning. So oftentimes we can even draw it here to kind of show you're going to get an original formation forming right at that opening. So right at the 930 opening, we form the breaker block. Okay. That's what this formation is here. So once this formation gets created, if we are going to continue to deliver for this now swing high, we have to understand, we have to engineer a reason for people to start looking for shorts. So we come down first, just barely tapping the breaker, leaving the mean threshold intact. As we start trading away, we have to think now, traders are gonna be in a hurry to buy here, right? And if they're buying, they're gonna place their stops at this swing low, trying to target this swing high. We understand this is our final target, but we're gonna need to pick up liquidity first, and that's what this swing low being formed here is doing. It's engineering into range liquidity that price can now pick up before the real move takes place. So now when we create the original farrier swing, right, that's this point here. That's what this swing point is going to be. We come back down to clear out that sell side. We're still, however, inside of the original setup, right? So this framework is still holding us. We can continue to expect this to hold. The consequent encroachment or the mean threshold, excuse me, of the breaker was never breached. So it's okay for us to look for this run on stops and then a reversal. We're not thinking price is going to continue to run and break down all the structure in here. We got a quick short term low and then this is what we really like to see. We clear that low and then give us right a quick snap higher leaving a fair value gap in here and that's where you see that first entry takes place and from there now right we're going to start targeting inner range liquidity, external range and ultimately the higher targets as we had. So you see price, right, takes off, creates equal highs, returns into a fair value gap where we add again, and then we're able to run through and price continues to deliver, right? So this framework in here is important to understand that just because we're getting short-term breaks in structure, right, short-term market structure shifts, we're not expecting all of this to be taken out. Simply we're returning lower to pick up stops and then trade higher. Right, so now that we kind of have that understanding, we can really see it take place here in price to where this original breaker formation is what we're just basing this whole setup off of. Right, we fall short of the mean threshold here. So we understand this can be used as sell side. After creating the failure swing, we attack that sell side, the internal range liquidity, picking up stops, clearing a low once more quickly, 
short term low cleared here. After clearing that low, we are then able to get back above this candle's high and notice we leave the fair value gap. Leaving the one minute fair value gap while also leaving the breaker. So both of these are happening at the same time. Right, we're leaving that breaker closing above while forming a one minute fair value gap perfectly aligned with it. And that's why we were so confident getting long there. Okay. So as we return into that fair value gap, we're picking up a position. We've already done the damage of clearing sell side. There's no need to return below these lows. And from there, the targets were just higher prices up here. Right, so we had partials. We had buy side. And you see we continue to add. And we'll talk about this one as we get up there. Right, as we break above, create a new fair value gap. We're just adding in the newest discount. We leave buy side here. So we're engineering liquidity, right? Engineering a swing high below a swing high. So we understand price is going to reach up into that. We finally get into the buy side. We were trying to see if we couldn't get into this fair value gap. We just continue to push instead. But ultimately, it was pretty nice delivery to see. We can speak about this one now. So our target was originally, I'm going to move the fair value gap. Our target was originally the new week opening gap here from October 6th and the 8th. We get up and through that. That's when we exit. But notice once we break up and through it, we create a new fair value gap. As we often say, that right there is not random. Closing above, leaving that fair value gap there, we would expect the new week opening gap low to act as support. So when we see this candle now perfectly re-deliver into that new week opening gap while holding their fair value gap, at this point, this fair value gap has became balanced. We've repriced into the low. We've then traded higher and closed back above. So if price really don't, wants to continue and deliver bullishly, there's no need to return into this level here. Right? We understand that. And that's why we can go in with such a tight stop. Right? We were super precise here. There's no reason that this fair value gap should give way, which means that this swing low formed should be protected. So we can have our stop right under that swing low. Right, we get up into there. We try to add up the volume imbalance, end up closing, really no need. We wanted the better entry here. So we capture right, that perfect entry, one ticket drawdown, and ultimately we get that delivery higher. As we went ahead and followed price, we saw that that newest discount here, we would expect to hold because we had not reached our target objective yet. That target objective being, right, one and a half standard deviations from that opening range. And you see how nicely we hit that level. Right here, we partial just underneath it as we clear equal highs, and then our final exit comes right on that. And we end up really kind of just consolidating until we get those entries in the afternoon. You'll see that once we hit that and we start retracing, where do we retrace into? <clears throat> just the untapped fair value gap. So we wick into there quickly. And this is where you see on the higher time frame, right? We had the higher time frame fair value gap here. We also have this one that holds the candle bodies. Right? Notice that one minute balance price range here. Wick goes lower. Bodies hold there perfectly. And right, we just kind of chop between that deviation point and the new week opening gap. As we start heading now into the afternoon coming out of lunch, we notice that, right, coming out of lunch, we return back into a discount here. So we return into this fair value gap. After returning into this fair value gap, we create a little fractalized YouTube setup. If we were to look at this on a seconds time frame, we have a short term low being cleared here. This candle would be a swing high that gets broken. And then we return back into that fair value gap. Right, so within here, we're using kind of that YouTube framework to understand what's taking place. As we see price hold from here and then expand through this high, this is now where the new breaker forms that we use. So once again, short term low to a short term high, lower low that then gets broken. Right up close candle here will act as our breaker. So once we close above these highs, and if I go to a two minute quick, you'll see what the exact fair value gap we were using. Okay, we're, we're closing above these highs and we have this two minute fair value gap here. This is where the actual entry came on. I don't know if we show. So as we're trading into that two minute paired with our breaker here, that is what we're using to get long, right? Makes sense there. So as you break through the high breaker formation, it's aligned and overlapped with the two minute fair value gap. We're very confident that this will hold us. That's our first entry. We end up targeting just five handles. 
right? This ended up being a 15 minute fair value gap high as well. And I guess we could actually just show you that. So this level here is an hourly fair value gap high, right? You can go pull that level up. And that was our original target. It aligned with five handles from our entry. So once we kind of get there, right, we ended up closing just on this candle. So a little bit above. But I noticed that we close above the fair value gap with right basically the candle closing above that level leaving the fair value gap behind again that right there signified to me at least in the short term that we can get one more run up into at this time right our daily fair value gap level so if we go to a daily chart we'll see how we have this daily fair value gap let me drag that out so this is that daily fair value gap high right we're short of that daily fair value gap high if we've already came all this way and we're closing above the hourly it just makes sense to reach for that daily, right? So the most recent discount here will hold us, especially because if you notice, we go from breaker block into mitigation block. And that's kind of what we would expect, right? So now we have a mitigation block here coming off the breaker paired with the fair value gap. Notice how the mean threshold of the mitigation block is the mean threshold of their fair value gap. So overlapping discounts, we like to see that. We had to sit through some time distortion, right? Choppiness. But eventually you see how aggressively we stab right up into that now daily fair value gap that ended up being our last position of the day and you notice how once we wicked into that level you see just that consolidation that followed so catching that swing high beautifully all of this is just consolidation 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 and ultimately right this is kind of where we are now so we ran this high one more time but you'll see just chopping power hour was pretty ugly as well we were content with reaching this because that daily fair value gap was our objective. And you see how if I drag that level out, that's really where we're consolidating around. All right, so that daily fair value gap level was the objective. Now we just consolidate until NFP tomorrow. Hopefully you guys found that one helpful. It was a nice day overall, all right? A lot of uh, good lessons to be taught here. And I really liked showing you guys and kind of running through this in real time, this little framework here of creating the original discount array, engineering liquidity, leaving the external range buy side intact, attacking that internal range liquidity while returning into right the discount, and then from there, reaching for a real target. This, of course, takes place on the opposite direction, but it was just easy to spot here this morning, so we were able to take advantage. Ultimately, going forward, we have no interest really in tomorrow, but if we can continue to accelerate Right, potentially get into the high of the new week opening gap here. So we're right now, we're kind of right in the center. All right, let me bring up the midpoint. Notice how the midpoint of this new week opening gap is basically the daily fair value gap here. So that's why price is gravitating here so aggressively, so heavily. If we can start getting away from it, especially getting above this high, right, new week opening gap here, and then we look for continued expansion. But as we said, NFP tomorrow, we're really not too interested. But that's just something to look for for those that right, may be kind of tapering. If we were to break down and get underneath, let's clear all this up in here. Look at the hourly. For me, getting underneath this fair value gap and closing underneath, we'd look for the new week opening gap low. Ultimately, I don't really see any other inefficiency besides this one hour fair value gap here. And that's quite a ways away. So we'd have to kind of start breaking structure aggressively to get down here. In the short term, I think. That we get into the high of the new week opening gap though but we'll let tomorrow play out and come back next week until then appreciate you guys hanging out this week hopefully you guys learned something or found something helpful and we will talk on tuesday take care everybody